I'm here at the Ruffner Mountain Nature Preserve with my friend Erin. And what's that on the floor? It's a turtle. What? How did that get in here? Well, it actually lives in here. Oh. But I brought him out to teach you guys a little bit about turtles. This is a red-eared slider. See the, little, ooh, see the little red spot? Not gonna put my finger there. Turtles are really, really cool. They make up the one of the largest portions of biomass, big word, biomass, biomass, out of any vertebrate in the world. They do this really, really cool thing. Our body temperature stays the same at all times. Okay. Unless we're sick, right. and then our temperature goes up. You get a fever, your Ooh. temperature goes up. They're all like, or if you're really, 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 really cold, then your temperature goes down. Okay. But with those two exceptions, our temperature stays regulated. Not these guys. They are ectothermic. Another big word. Ectothermic. <laughs> what does that mean? You tell me. All right, so ectothermic, basically means that they rely on outer sources, such as the sun, uh, uh, a surface heated by something else. But their body temperatures don't stay the same temperature constantly. It requires them to bask or sit on a object that's been heated by the sun. They actually can breathe underwater. Did you know that? Whoa, how do they do that? Oh, well, it's called cloacal respiration. Big word, but easy non-scientific explanation is What? Why do you do that? Scientists call it a cloaca, but it's basically their butt. Okay. So their cloaca is where eggs come from. Right. It's where their feet and their poop comes from. Okay. And it's also where they can breathe from. Of course they use that when they're underwater and it's some basic chemistry, some gases are exchanged and they are able to stay underwater for long periods of time. Does this turtle come from Alabama? Yes, yeah, so they naturally occur here in Alabama. You know, we were talking about biomass here just a little bit ago. Well, I have to tell you guys that there's over 200 species of turtles. And with them taking up such a large biomass, when they start to become extinct or threatened, that can be really problematic for us. What do you mean by biomass? And why does it matter so much when species become extinct? So biomass is the occurrence of a type of something within its population within its area, within its population. Think of it kind of like a, a wheel or okay. a tire. Okay. So if you guys can close your eyes with me and we think about a tire, right? A tire is round. Yeah. Round, okay. If we take just a pinch out of that tire, will it still roll? Yeah, it will still roll. Well. Okay, yeah, if, if a turtle, if one turtle dies, will the entire population of turtles collapse? Probably not. Probably not. Turtles die. Turtles die. Let's take five more big chunks out of it and let's try to roll it. Oh man, it fell. It's not rolling anymore. So we say all of that to say that much like the tire, these turtles play an important role in the ecosystem they occur in. And when they stop occurring in that ecosystem or their numbers decline really fast, that can be problematic to the to the ecosystem, to the other animals that occur in that ecosystem. Something so delicate of a change could have catastrophic effects, which is why we want to do our part to reduce, reuse, and recycle. So you're saying, what does turtles and recycling have to do? Yeah, what's the connection? This is an aquatic turtle. We do have terrestrial turtles. So these guys live in water. A lot of our pollution, our trash, uh, makes it into our waterways. So these guys, they, they will actually swallow those small pieces of plastic. Sometimes they'll swallow pieces of plastic that we can't even see. Good reason why you should recycle. Can't 
can they come out of their shells? Like a hermit crab? That's a really good question. Can you come out of there? Talk to me. Can you come out of there? Say it again. No. <laughs> no, I can't. So a turtle without its shell not looking very good. They've actually found that the shell is part of their bones. It's Whoa. all fused together. Wow. And it grows with the turtle. That's really cool. I just learned something. I didn't know that. Did you guys know that? Wow. Well, I actually have a really fun story about a turtle that lives in water just like this turtle, an aquatic turtle. So let's head to the library and hear that story. The story I have for you today is a Native American folk tale. And I found it in this book, Native American Animal Stories by Joseph Kruchok. Let's go to the Shadow Puppet Theater. Turtle lived in a beautiful pond. He liked to swim around in the water and climb up on the bank to bask in the sun. As the weather got colder, Turtle would hibernate for the winter, diving deep into the pond and burying himself in the mud. He slept there all winter. One spring, when he woke up and began swimming to the surface, he noticed that the surface was much farther away than usual. When he popped up above the water, he realized that the level of the pond had risen. It had risen so much that the bank where he basked in the sunshine was completely underwater. Someone had built a dam blocking the water flow from the river and creating a much deeper pond. Suddenly that someone appeared. It was Beaver. Hey, get out of my pond, Beaver said angrily. Your pond? This is my pond. I've lived here for years. You've ruined it with your dam. I've been here all winter, Beaver argued, and it's much better like this. You can't live here. It's mine now. That's not fair. What are you going to do about it? Turtle mused about how he could outwit Beaver. The beaver was bigger than him and had long, sharp front teeth. We could have a contest. I'll race you across the pond. A race? Ha! You're a fool. I'll certainly win, the beaver said. We'll see, said Turtle. I'm a very fast swimmer. In fact, I'm so fast it hardly seems fair. You know what? I'm going to let you start in front of me. If you have a head start, you might have a fair chance. So Turtle and Beaver prepared to race across the pond to the other side. They took off, and sure enough, Beaver was fast with his big, flat tail. Turtle almost couldn't keep up with him. It was time to enact his plan. With his strong jaws, he grabbed onto Beaver's tail and let Beaver drag him unknowingly through the water. Right before Beaver reached the other side, Turtle bit down as hard as he could on Beaver's tail. Meow! Not knowing what had happened, Beaver slapped his tail, flinging Turtle into the air, up, up, and over Beaver, where he landed on the other side of the pond first. I won, cried Turtle. I made it to the other side before you. Fair is fair, and you have to leave my pond, but first... Undo your dam so I can have my sunny spot back. So Beaver removed the trees that dammed up the water, and Turtle's pond returned to normal. Once again, he could swim around unbothered and sun himself on his favorite bank, and Beaver never came back again. What did you think about how Turtle got his home back from Beaver? Well, if you want to learn more about how you can help keep turtles happy and safe in their homes or habitats, then be sure to check out and support Ruffner Mountain Nature Preserve. You can also come down here to the library and read some books about turtles and conservation. I want to give a huge thank you to Ruffner Mountain and to Erin for teaching us so much about turtles today. I'll see you guys next time. Happy reading!